Hello everyone and welcome to this St Peter's Church Recklesham live stream service at 10 via the vicarage and uh, it's so lovely to be gathered here uh, with everyone. Um, whatever the weather, whatever the mood, when we come together, when two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, there's a spirit of warmth, hospitality, welcome and love and we're all in it together come what may and if anyone needed that this weekend then I did uh, I had a techie meltdown yesterday um, uh, Paul will vouch for that and I have never been more um, comforted to know that I was going to be with my dear friends today to worship a loving God and to pray uh, for ourselves for the world and for others and to receive spiritual nourishment in the communion, in the thanksgiving, that we are here, no matter how shaky our faith is, we are here. And faith is all about action. So welcome, as I say, pyjamas or Sunday best, I say it every week, and I keep threatening that one day I might wear my pyjamas. <laughs> um, but it's lovely that you're here. Today, after the service, we are going to try a Zoom coffee morning. <clears throat> um, it's unknown, uh, but the more the merrier. And it's at 11.15 and I sent the code round with the notice sheet. It's on your sheet now. If it's not, the news sheet is on the uh, Facebook page there. I believe, <clears throat> and you can uh, you can come into uh, the coffee morning and let's see what happens. It'd just be lovely to see everyone's faces, won't it? So, and feel free to message during the service to to um, petition for prayers or whatever boring sermon. I don't know. No, don't say that. But anything, anything you like. And the sermon is on the website and. Um, it, this service will be on the website later on and just to say that I do print out the service the sermon the news sheet and I take it round to some of the folk I know who would really like to be part of it but don't have computer access so if you know anyone like that just let me know uh, today Jonathan and Naomi as ever will be leading our singing uh, with their beautiful piano and voices, and Catherine Beasley will be leading our intercession prayers, and Paul will be reading for us. So thank you to those people. And just as we prepare, and uh, poignantly, uh, we are walking into Mental Health Awareness Week this week, and there is information about that on the news sheet uh, there is a website um, where you can go if that will help you or someone that you know um, and you can download uh, a virtual coffee morning. There's lots of um, comforting um, hints and tips for getting through a really difficult time when isolation is not the best thing for you and being separate from your friends and family. So anyway, there's more information on the news sheet. And we do pray, don't we, for those who are afflicted in tough ways through the coronavirus and the social, economic, well-being um, impact that it's having. So let's just give ourselves a moment and then we can pray into the heart of this virus pandemic for healing, for restoration, and for safe steps as we go forward. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Comfort those who are mourning the loss of a loved one at this time, trusting in your promise of eternal life, through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So here we are, we've logged on together. We are saying we're open to receiving God's grace, God's nourishment for the soul, to strengthen our minds, which will steady our coming days. And this week, in our words, we're, we're exploring how Jesus promises his disciples that God will send the spirit of truth who will be with them forever. He reminds them that those who love him, those who keep his commandments, will be the subjects of a revelation of unconditional, unfailing love and presence. The Holy Spirit is here, the sacred space is set. Our call to worship begins. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Alleluia. Peace to our homes and to all who live in them. And peace to our communities. We say the gathering prayer. Gracious God, we come before you, drawn by the power of your welcoming love. We come with our sorrows and joys. We come with our expectations and apprehensions. We come with all that we are. Help us to support and encourage each other. Help us to love as we are loved. In your love, we find peace and hope. Spirit of truth, come and abide in us. Amen. And our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we come to our prayers of penitence. That time when we can bring our sorrows and the sorrows of the world, of a broken humanity. We can lay them before the throne of grace, God's unconditional, unfailing, forgiving love. We can be sorry for the things that we've said or done that will impact in not such a good way on others. We know God is longing to receive us home. So we pause to bear witness to our own hearts. God of love, we are sorry that at times our love for you falters, that we have wrong priorities, that we overlook your guidance. Forgive us and renew us. Loving Saviour, we are sorry that we disobey your commandments, that we fail to love, that we sometimes walk by on the other side. Forgive us and renew us. Spirit of truth, we are sorry that we can disregard your presence, that our thoughts and feelings are unrighteous, that we follow the world's way. Forgive us and renew us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your presence abiding in us, Heavenly Father, lead us in the right way, that we may bring light to all in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in God the Father. Amen. And now that old Christian prayer, that hymn, Gloria in Excelsis, where we worship, we intentionally honour that worship that we bring before God through the Father in the power of the Spirit. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we now pray the Collect, the Gathering Prayer for the Church, on this sixth Sunday of Easter. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And we come to our first reading from the book of Acts, which will be followed by our first hymn and then the Gospel reading. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship. I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Acts. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading from John's Gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was always going to be a tricky bit. <laughs> there was a complication with the readings, there's a bit of a delay, but uh, 
Oh, we, um, we were nourished by those words, weren't we? By the account of Paul's sermon and also the comforting words of Jesus. Now, there couldn't be two more poignant readings for us today in the midst of the challenges that we have faced and continue to face as we begin to gently step out again. And we can remind ourselves that while Paul was speaking on the other side of the resurrection, the gospel reading sets Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper. Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for what is to come, reminding them of God's unconditional love, that they won't be left alone no matter what. But while God's love is unconditional, to receive those benefits, there has to be obedience involved. Spiritual ob obedience, which will ultimately lead to spiritual obedience and physical obedience and emotional obedience, which will bring um, the right result for living a life out in unconditional love. You will keep my commandments isn't a suggestion. It's a call to put love into action, to ground that emotional sentiment into a love that heals and restores and comforts and strengthens and mobilises transformation for good. Both of the readings today are significant in their own right as reminding us that God is always with us. He created us, he loves us and longs to be in a two-way relationship with us. And through Jesus, in his living, dying and rising to new life, God is dwelling within us through his Holy Spirit. So this is now an intentional relationship. We are conscious that this relationship is true and honest and is really going somewhere in the plan to mobilise us towards a more honest and authentic living out of our lives, our loves and our longing quest for freedom, for peace and hope. For ourselves, we want that, we long for it, for the world and for others. When we are woven into that circle of love, that relationship between God, the creator, his son, Jesus, the sustainer, and the Holy Spirit, the maintainer, then we are truly able to live in a grace-filled circle of life that's lived out in love that we can pass on to others who in turn will do likewise. Unconditionally, not conditional on whether things are happening that we want to happen or whether we're getting our own way or whether people are doing what we want. This is an unconditional relationship where we accept people and things and places for who they are, treating them as we would want to be treated ourselves and doing the best to be tolerant in the differences and actually even find a way to celebrate when appropriate. And this is the theme running through the call of Jesus to follow his commandments and there are only two to love God with all our heart and to love our neighbours as ourselves. And in that context, we now get a clearer understanding of Paul's great sermon about God the Creator, not made of human hands, nor a product of human imagination. He doesn't quote chapter and verse about the scripture interpretation. It is there for sure, but he doesn't need to do all that. He meets those people where they are and acknowledges their own experience of an unknown God. And then he introduces them to the God of the gospel. Verse 23, God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. And Paul assures them that we too 
are God's offspring. And like a loving parent, God has let the ignorant brokenness of our behaviour go on for long enough. And he is now calling for repentance. He's calling for a turning back of it all. A change of heart and mind so that a new way, a new life can be lived, embedded on the love that he commands that we can bear witness to ourselves. And he shows us the way to access that love is through Jesus, who in turn shows us in the flesh what is happening in the spirit. Dying to brokenness and hopelessness, rising to new life of wholeness and hopefulness, free from the bondage of the sinful broken ways of the past. Now, for us, it's now time to not just talk the talk, but to walk it. And if ever a theme of God's world that was relevant today, wouldn't you agree that surely this idea of putting down old ways, learning new ideas and practising them continually, the kindness, the patience, the generosity, the security that we had in the things that were simple that we always had, not being dependent on the things that we can't have right now. And practising all these things helps us towards that perfect love, which of course only God can witness to, but we can try, and trying is the achievement. And of course, the commandment, commandments of the gospel say it again, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verses 16 to 18, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be with you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. Jesus is saying you will see me because you, my followers, have been open, we've trusted and we've believed. And so therefore we will see. And G Jesus continues to assure that although you won't see me for a little while, you will see me. You will see me in a new way though. I will send you an advocate, which means I will send you one called to be by your side, always an intercessor, a go-between, between heaven and earth, within us, Jesus at the centre. There is a really famous book called The Go-Between God, Earth, Jesus, Heaven. We come to Jesus, we soar to heaven, and then heavenly grace fills our lives and our hearts. Jesus is sure that his followers will experience his love in a new way. And by following those commandments, we are told that we will be loved and we will be able to love more fully, more truly. And we will be loved by the Father, our Father through Jesus, in the power of that Holy Spirit. I will love them and reveal to them myself, says Jesus. And the amazing hope and conviction of these words is that the re revelation that we are promised is quite simple. It is the revelation of divine, pure love. Amen. Can we pray? We are your children, O God. We trust that you have not left us alone. As you show us the love that is the way, the truth, the life of all that is good, 
Help us always to show that love in all that we do, so that all may be filled with the spirit of your way, your truth and your love. Amen. And we come to the time where we affirm our faith by the words of a creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And at this point, for simplicity's sake really, I invite you to join me in the peace now, before we enter our time of prayer. So please, join me. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we share that peace in whatever way works for us at this time. And we come now to our time of prayer. And Catherine will lead our intercessions. After ever faithful Lord, you may like to join with the refrain, we lift our hearts and prayers to you. Let us pray. Faithful Lord, Thank you that you are king of all the earth and also our steadfast companion dwelling with us wherever we may be. In this time of fracture and separation, we pray for peace, for unity and for justice. Grant to all nations a spirit of cooperation that resources and information may be shared fairly. We pray for vulnerable communities, for refugees and slum dwellers. Help relief workers to provide them with protection and to demonstrate that there is a God who cares. In our own nation, we ask you to bring agreement among leaders and scientists and to guide them to the right path forward. And we pray for understanding and trust between employers and employees that those returning to work may feel safe. Ever faithful Lord, we lift our hearts and prayers to you. Loving Lord, we uphold all who are distressed, especially by separation from family and friends. Be their companion, their strength and their hope. We give thanks for our NHS care and key workers, praying that you will protect, sustain and encourage them. May those who are ill know your loving, healing presence. May they be assured that you hold them in the palm of your hand. 
and we remember all who have died. Grant them everlasting peace with you and bring comfort to those they leave behind. Ever loving Lord, we lift our hearts and prayers to you. Living Lord, we pray for your church, that we might understand how you are calling us to serve you at this time. Thank you for new approaches to living out our faith and for new partnerships being forged. Give us eyes to see and make your presence known in new and unexpected places and also in familiar everyday experiences. Help us move forward with a deeper sense of your loving companionship and with faith that you have plans to give each one of us a hope and a future. Ever living Lord, we lift our hearts and prayers to you, confident that you have heard and will answer. In the name of Christ, Amen.
we come to our time of communion together, separate but very much together, and the preparation of the table. The table is prepared, and I symbolically wash away my own iniquity, my own sin, brokenness, coming to this table to pray the words on behalf of us all. We pray, Lord of life, with unbound joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise in sickness and health, in suffering and joy, in times of fear and celebration, through Christ our risen Saviour and Redeemer, who stands by us and pours out for us our healing, the oil of consolation and the wine of renewed hope, turning the darkness of our pain into the dawning light of his kingdom. In your wisdom and love, you anoint your holy people to be a royal priesthood, to share in Christ's suffering and to reveal his glory to the world. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too now join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, the body and blood of our dear Lord Jesus. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you destroyed our life. You restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. 
accept through him our great high priest this our sacrifice of thanks and praise and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty renew us with your spirit inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son jesus christ our lord through him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven we worship you father almighty in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honor and glory and power be yours for ever and ever amen Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ offered his body and shed his blood for you and for me. And on behalf of us all, I receive these sacraments in honour and remembrance that Jesus died for us all. now you're invited to hold out your hands with me and open your heart to receive our Lord Jesus Christ spiritually feeding on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving thanks be to you Lord Jesus Christ for all the benefits you have given us for all the pains and insults you have borne for us since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives us the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of all goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And some notices, uh, the bring and share service uh, is now going to be available monthly. We were a little ambitious to think it might be fortnightly. So the 7th of June, it will be uploaded at 5 p.m. Please send in any offerings, recordings, photos, reflections, readings, or tell me and I'll source a favorite song or a hymn for you and, and we'll, we'll include it. The Zoom Cafe, as I said, 11.15. See you in the room with a cuppa. I think we've got time just to get a cup of 
tea or coffee. Um, and uh, I hope to see some of you there. So we come to our final hymn, and for sure there are times when we feel alone, when God seems distant, he seems to be um, unheard, and everything hangs by a thread, including our faith. And this hymn, it's almost like a watch word for St Peter's Church especially, and it's from, uh, it draws its essence from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, when there's doubt and frustration. But amidst all that, we have a Lord who is faithful and consistent and will never leave us. So great is thy faithfulness, O God thy Father. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, for sure.
and our blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good will to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and all who we love, wherever they may be, this day and forevermore. Amen. And we part in peace, in hope, and in love. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And as we part in peace, please, I invite you to just sit back and relax and soak up a UK blessing sung by 65 churches throughout the UK, but actually sung on behalf of us all. And as you listen to this song, the blessing, if you haven't already, imagine yourself being blessed by every church in the land, every person who holds in their heart the longing for peace and love. And then be blessed and go forward as a blessing to your friends and family and wider world. This has been downloaded two million times in the first week. And so we pray God's sprinkling of blessings everywhere, don't we? Until we meet again like this and hopefully see you for coffee.
We pray a blessing, manna rain down from heaven. This isn't second guessing, we know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children. Please favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children. Oh, 